All right. Good afternoon, everybody, and welcome to our first Topical Tuesday session of the new school year. We are so excited to be welcoming our friends from Teaching Books today. Just a couple of housekeeping things before I turn the screen over to them. Um, just please keep your microphone muted when you aren't speaking. You, of course, can utilize the chat for questions. Stephanie and I will be monitoring the chat. And I'm going to stop sharing and I'm going to turn it over to Jill. Hi, everybody, and thank you, Lisa, for bringing me here today. Um, I am going to share some new updates from Teaching Books. So I'm sure many of you are familiar with Teaching Books, and I'm going to do a quick little review for those of you who may not be as familiar and show you what we have that's new. So let me share my screen. I don't use Google Meet as often as I use Zoom, so hopefully I can share smoothly here it's pretty easy it's just the square button at the bottom with the up arrow got it and we're gonna do a window and there we go you're good okay great all right so here we are on teaching books and we have a um, handful of new genres that I'm going to point out, a couple of new lessons I'm going to point out, and then I'm going to talk about um, what we can find up here in this customize your display option. So first thing we're going to do is take a look at a few of our new genres. And so these are all new within the last six months or so. And we have a new picture book collection. So I'm going to look that up there. And when I type in picture book, I can go right over to my picture book collection over here in the featured section. This will take me to this full um, collection of almost 20,000 books. And you can also find this under browse and see all collections and under our genre selections here. So we're going to go back over to our picture book. And then remember, you can filter um, based on these um, options on the left. So lots of different ways to get exactly what it is that you are looking for or needing. Let's filter our picture book collection today by one of our resource types. Let's do meet the author recording. And that brings us down to 895 title results that have meet the author recordings with them. And we love these meet the author recordings because they're essentially the author book talking their book for you. And let's take a quick look over at Dreamers. And when I click that, it takes me immediately to our original resources that include that Meet the Author recording, which we'll listen to a, a little bit of in a second here. And then we can also see we've got a number of Meet the Author movies with Juji Morales, and we've got her name pronunciation as well. But I can click on our Meet the Author recording, and here we get to hear a little bit from her. Hello, this is Juji Morales, and I am the author and illustrator of Dreamers. I'm going to tell you a bit about how I came to create this book, and then I'll share an excerpt with you. Some people were saying wrong things about immigrants. They were saying that immigrants were bad, that immigrants were criminal. I am an immigrant who came from Mexico to the United States as a new mother when my baby was two months old. I needed to do something about the sadness I felt and I decided to use my voice and my art to tell our story. I began writing of how one day my son and I crossed the border and about the confusion I experienced trying to learn how to live in a new place where I didn't understand the customs or the language. I also wrote about how one day we had been welcomed in an incredible place that changed our lives forever the public library. So we'll pause that there. And again, love these meet the author recordings for hearing from an author, understanding why they wrote this book and using it to introduce these books to your readers. And I said that we were gonna get to customize your display at the end, but I'm gonna actually show you something in it right now. And so here I am in my meet the author recording and say I wanna see this in a different mode. I can go up to customize your display and I can select dark mode. 
And so once I've got that dark mode on and I apply my changes, I'm going to go back over to Dreamers and right back into that Meet the Author recording. And then we see what that looks like when we've added that dark mode to something. So that dark mode is going to change um, just places where you're seeing those transcripts, not the entire website. But I wanted to show you that while we were actually in a resource. OK, and now we're going to go back over to our picture book collection because I want to show you one other thing. You may already be aware of this, but I just want to make sure that it's especially clear to you because it's so great with our picture book collection. Under our resource types, if you scroll on down, you can get to complete book readings. And when we click on our complete book readings, that brings us to um, 1,485 title results that we have in that picture book collection that have a full book reading with it. And so any of these that we click on is going to have, we click on the day you begin, for example, it's going to have a complete video reading here. Um, we have also excerpts, but we have a couple of different complete readings um, for this particular text. And I want to sh show you as well if I can find it. I just love this one. So our Ada Twist Scientist one. If we go to our complete book reading here and watch a little bit of this. Welcome to Storytime from Space Project of the Global Space Education Foundation. To learn how you can support this exciting project, please visit storytimefromspace.com. Hello and welcome to Storytime in Space. My name is Serena Anand Chancellor and I'm on board Expedition 56 on the International Space Station. Again, welcome, whether you're at home or at school or your local library. Uh, today, we are in the airlock, which is where we do all our spacewalks from on the International Space Station. And I'm next to my two buddies here, spacesuit number one and spacesuit number two. Now, I'll pause that there. She gives a little bit more explanation about that airlock space. And we've got this complete book reading of a scientist book, or um, yes, yeah, scientist related te text. Um, from the International Space Station. And so I wanted to highlight that we've got those complete book readings and some of them are really special like this one um, for you to easily access from any of our collections, but they're especially um, prominent in our picture book collections. So that picture book collection is our new genre and we're gonna look also at our beginning reader. So I'm typing in beginning there and it's gonna take me over to my beginning reader collection And so here we go. We've got a beginning reader and early collection, um, early reader collection now, as well as that picture book collection. And so as a reminder, again, looking at these resource types, because this is that quick way of kind of seeing everything that Teaching Books has to offer, um, we have book guides, activities, and lessons associated with all of our texts too. So I'm going to click on book guides, activities, and lessons. And that brings me down to a thousand title results. And then I can explore any of these and see what I've got. If I click on You Are Not Small, it'll take me over here to these book guides, activities, and lessons where we've got activity guides, teaching ideas um, from a number of different sources, and classroom guides. And our last new genre is our concept book collection. And we click on that one and brings that we see you are not small again right there. We also have some Gigi Morales text in here as well. And then we've got all of those filters for um, exploring further. And even though we are in one of our new genres, we can also still filter further by a genre. So like, let's click on fairy tales to see what happens there. And then that brings up our trickster books here from Gigi Morales. And then we can explore any of those texts that we want to. And again, all of these new genres are under browse and see all collections and our genres in here. And so we've got that picture book and our beginning reader and our concept books. Okay, so those are all of our new genres and I'm gonna show you now a couple of, um, of our new lessons. So one, we now have fairy tale um, multi-level lessons on our site. So I'm gonna click on, um, 
actually going to go over here to for educators and literacy and standards connections. And in here, you can see all the different multi-level lessons we have. So these are great for differentiated classrooms or for working with an independent reader as they progress through a text or even with your groups of readers and book clubs. So here you'll see we've got these fairy tales and folklore right here. When I click on that, it's going to bring up all of the texts that have this folklore um, lesson attached to it, this fairy tale and folklore lesson. We'll click on Cinder and take a look at, at these lessons. So we've got story map, cultural representation, those have existed for a while, and then we've got our new lesson, fairy tales and folklore. And then in here, we can um, create that, and you'll see what's at these different levels. So starting at level one, we're looking at the more basic levels of a story map, the character setting, beginning, middle, and end. And then we progress and start adding more and more fairy tale characteristics throughout those levels until in level four, we're looking at the type of tale, problem, solution, potential moral or lesson, fantastical elements, themes, mission or quest, challenges and obstacles. So lots of ways of walking through a fairy tale, um, through the characteristics of a fairy tale with your readers. And when we create one of these, you can customize the questions that are related as well. So you'll see it's got a grid with um, categories for your students to fill out. And then on that second page is the option where you can um, customize these questions to whatever sorts of things you want your readers to be um, reflecting on. And if we save that, then that lives for us over in our three line toggle menu up here. If I click on that, and then I'm going to hit refresh. The first time you create a lesson, if you haven't done this yet, you want to hit refresh to find it in that hamburger menu or toggle menu. We just had this discussion with, with my coworkers recently over whether we call this a toggle menu or a hamburger menu. But here, look, it says toggle menu. So that's what we're calling it. And then any lessons you create will show up there under your lessons. And there we go. OK. So those are all of our new, the new content that we've got going on. We also have one more place before I show you a little more with our customizing. Under our four educators and our teaching ideas, we have a number of new ready to use ideas. And so, so many of these have existed up here for a while. Um, and we have recently added new ones to explore further. And we also have our monthly lesson ideas under here. If you're um, a frequent user of our site, you may remember that these were usually listed up here under timely topics, but now our monthly lesson ideas will live here with several months at a time. And as a reminder that with any of these monthly lessons, you can pull these up and they will take you to a complete book reading or to a Google preview of a text where you can use um, use our direct links to engage directly with that text, even if you don't have it in your classroom or library. So really great for those days when you might be pulled into a classroom and need something to do, or when you've got a potential sub. And these go up through eighth grade, and they also include author studies. So remember to check those out for inspiration. Lastly, we're going to go into our customized display and look at this a little more closely, actually, before we do that, because hmm, we want to do this or this first. Actually, we're going to look at our focused sharing before we look at our customized display. And so focused sharing is a new option that we have underneath our sharing tool. I'm going to go back actually to our Meet the Author recording with Dreamers. So we're coming back to this resource. Now, say we want to share this resource. We've got these sharing arrows. These take you, um, these allow you to share these with anybody anywhere and they don't have to have a login and we've got all these different ways of sharing. Um, and we have recently added the option to share this resource with either the ability to explore the full site from here on out or share only this resource. So if I click on only this resource and I then save, copy this link that I've got here, and I go up and I create, put this into a new tab, 
This takes me to this resource only. And so you can share this with students and then they can't click around further into teaching books. And so it's great for that pedagogical need of maybe focusing your younger readers to not be distracted by exploring further in teaching books. Or if you have concerns about what kind of materials, materials your students have access to, this is a great way to share specific things from teaching books that you have um, selected and vetted for yourself. And so once anybody's in here, all they can do is play this resource. And just to show you the difference, if we click back to full site exploration here and then click that link, that allows us then to click through. So usually if you've got in the past when, you've, when, we, when we have used that share error, we've been able to just go wherever and explore further. And now with this focus sharing, you can limit it to a particular resource. And let me pause before I finish up with our customized stuff um, and see if there's any questions or anything you want me to repeat or go back um, or, or show again before I move on. Any questions, anyone? All right, I think you can go on. All right, so as a reminder, we're in this dark mode and let's look at what else we can customize with that display. So if I click on customize your display, we've got this option for a dyslexia supportive font. And so that will change if I apply that, that will change everything on the site except for embedded logos. So that allows that font um, to change for your readers who may benefit from that sort of readability. We can go back to our customize. We'll uncheck that one. I'm gonna uncheck my dark mode too apply my changes, and then we're gonna go over our content curation. So lastly, we've got our content curation, and this is brand new. And you can um, activate browser-specific controls on this particular device. And so if you've got a, a device that you are having your students pass around, or if you've got a computer lab and you've got the time that you could go and set this on each computer, and then they'll have access only to the grade levels that we include here. So if I select PK2 and I apply these changes, now on my device right here, I can't access, um, or my users, if I'm signed out, won't be able to access um, books outside of that range. Now let me just look up real quick what that's gonna look like. So because I'm logged in and we can see Welcome Jill up here, I can still access the Hate You Give, which is a seven to 12 range text, but it tells me that this has been restricted for student viewing in, in accordance with the content controls, which is set by you on this particular device. And now if I sign out one level, I wonder if that's gonna hold it for me. Yep, let's see. I look up the hate we give here. So now when I'm signed out one level, which would be the level at which your students would see a particular device if you were to set these content controls, then they can only access K um, PK2 books. So if they are looking up an older book, they're not gonna see it at all. So it doesn't show up for me. And so that is how our content curation or our curation controls are set up right now and how they're working. And you can use those you can use that focus sharing to limit the, the exploration your students do if you want to really keep them focused on a particular site. Um, or you can customize your display and have a student use this particular device, or you can do it on a few devices um, if you wanted to keep that um, grade range limited for the readers that you've got or users that you've got on your computer. Um, and I'm not sure how, it may depend on really how um, have your students engaging with um, teaching books, but you now know that you've got this option here for um, that kind of curation control. So that's all the new stuff that I've got to show you. And Lisa, is there anything else you'd like me to address? Or, and um, see if I've got any other questions that might be coming in. So far, no questions. Or does anyone have any questions on how you might want to use this with students, how you could use it in your libraries, uh, book displays? Uh, Maria? Maria, go ahead. She might be muted. So can see Maria, you got to unmute. <laughs> I can't unmute you, Maria. 
We can't hear you. She is unmuted. In the meantime, uh, Natalie. Hi, Lisa. Hi, Jill. Um, as as a person that's new in a library, how would I use this particular platform in a high school? Great question. So it would depend on largely um, what text you're using and what you'd want to what your objectives were. So I'm going to sign back in. Actually, I'll, I'll leave myself. No, I do need to sign back in because we need to be able to see our um, all of our seven to 12 titles. So let me sign back in here real quick. And here we go. Um, so I'm going to show you a couple of different ways to access our um, 7 to 12 levels and 4 to 8. So we're going to supply our changes, come back. So we've got our full access to our site. And if you are looking for particular young adult collections um, or teen reader collections, we can go to Browse and our See All Collections here and go to our 7 to 12 grade level. And then this will bring up all of the, the text that we have in our teen book collection. You can also access that teen book collection by typing in teen book, just like we did earlier with the new genres that I showed. And then that will pull it up for you as well. And here then you could filter by the resource types you might be looking at or looking for. If you've got readers who are particularly interested in certain texts, like if we go to Long Way Down, we could look at finding read-alikes. And so we could do a discover like books here, and it'll bring up all of the categories that are related to this text, all of the awards that this um, that are related to this text, and you can continue to explore further um, from that Discover Like Books option. So if you're looking for additional books for your readers, we've also got any related editions that show up right there. And if we also go back to our teen book collection here, you can filter further by any of our cultural experiences here or by curricular area. So if you're looking for ELA books or STEAM books, whatever, you can filter further and it will stay in that teen book collection for you. And if you are looking for a particular genre, you can do that here as well. And then you can use those different resources and it can depend, so it's entirely dependent on how you wanted to use them. But if you've got book clubs you're working with, you could introduce, um, introduce particular texts with those Meet the Author recordings or with book trailers. We have a lot of book trailers for these YA texts. If we narrowed it by that resource, that brings us a lot of different title options to explore there. Those are, they're really fun to explore because there are these different kinds of trailers that we see. And so you could even share a selection of them and have your readers think about which ones are the most compelling. And we also do have a number of classic texts on our site. And so if you're, if you're any of those texts that we might associate with high school reading. So of mice and men, we have um, any of these, um, particular texts that you think of for the classroom. We've got lots of Shakespeare um, that you can explore in here. We even got a video book trailer for Of Mice and Men here. And if I pull up Romeo and Juliet, for example, then in here, when I explore this, there's actually a number of book readings. And so I can get an excerpt or I can get a complete reading from lit to go. So most of our Shakespeare selections have that complete reading. So students can actually hear that text aloud, which can help with that um, processing of a difficult language like Shakespeare, or a difficult uh, reading um, level like Shakespeare. Um, and then same with those book trailers, the Romeo and Juliet ones are fun because there's so many different ones just for this particular text. So I'm going to stop talking, Natalie, but I hope I gave you some ideas there for what you could do with um, teen readers. We had a couple questions in the chat. The first one is, would you advise that, she's, that a uh, middle school media specialist set an age range for her entire school to like four to eight and can she even do that that's a great question and i think that would be something you'd probably want to um work with lisa um on if you if it was something that you wanted to do we can do it um it's something that we would have to we would arrange a meeting with you and lisa and um our executive team at Teaching Books because they're the ones who have much more information about what that would look like, the different ways that you can do it for your district, um, and 
these are conversations we're having with a lot of different districts right now too. And so um, we have a lot of ideas for how that can be done, but really want to make sure that it's working for whatever you needed most. And the other question was, what was the new genre you mentioned just before concept books? Right before concept books, we talked about beginning and early reader. All right. Okay. Any other questions? Uh, Juanita? I, know, I hope you can hear me. We yeah. can. Um, so for instance, when I went into um, to do a search, I noticed a couple of the books that came out last summer that we were asked to pull about Jazz Jennings. Mm -hmm. Those are on the resource list or they're in, I believe the high school seven to 12. I just wonder how this, sorry, how does this connect to our new rules, Lisa, or are we still in that learning stage? Thank we you. are still in that learning stage. We actually don't have official rules from anywhere. Um, as of right now, the only things we have to worry about are um, topic or our picture or books with transgender characters in K3. Right? Everything else is free choice. But I thought last year, I thought we received a memo from. You did. I can't remember who it was. So it was asking for two specific books. Yep. Those books have been returned to the shelves, but are marked for grades four and five only. Okay. Okay. Now I understand. Thank you so okay. much. Okay. Nothing, actually, nothing has been pulled. We have, we're, we're, we're doing pretty well there. Any other questions we can answer? Uh, if not, I'm going to go ahead and take over sharing from Jill. Oh, sure, I'll stop sharing. And I see uh, Lisa and Natalie asked a question in the okay. chat about using various platforms such as teaching books to get the most out of them. Yep, absolutely, Natalie. Um, our first one coming up for the new media specialists is with WorldBook, and I can certainly set up one with all of our databases for the new media specialists. I can certainly invite Jill to come and do a session for you guys yep. um, just to give you the ins and the outs of everything. Um, and we know that's really helpful for you guys. All right, let me go ahead and share a tab. Okay. All right, well, thank you everybody for your time. And um, Lisa, thanks again for having me join you. And please let me know if you've got any questions or concerns or needs, and I'll talk to you soon. Great, thanks so much, Jill. Um, if you have not joined Emma yet, please, please, please consider joining us. Advocacy is more important than ever this year. Um, for our elementary uh, EMA members, remember your share tank is coming up on September 27th. If you have ideas, uh, please reach out to Caroline Epstein. She will be happy to include them in the presentation. Continue tagging us on um, your social media and Twitter. We see them. We love them. Please be using hashtag LoveMyLibraryPBCSD. Register in e-learning for points. Uh, it's going to be 20 points for the year. Um, and super simple follow-up, just one document um, due at the end of the year. Our next session will be, I forgot the date, but uh, in the first week of October, and we will be welcoming, welcoming our friends from School Library Connection. All right. Have a great afternoon, everyone.